And this is this is the biggest trick that's ever been perpetrated on mankind, if you will, in regards to their a shadow government was set up. A shadow government. And I believe the intent of that government was in place prior to 1776. There is all indication that uh, Great Britain instituted the establishment of the uh, 1776, the Declaration of Independence, in order to put in place the shadow government. So all indications are there of what we're suffering from today, which is corporations and banksters and merchants running our government. Uh, it's like a dictatorship. Uh, you know, when you're living in a government of corruption, it's very difficult to actually see how bad it really is because they have uh, what they call privileges and benefits. Some do well and most do not. Some pay taxes and most pay more taxes. So um, it's like a slave uh, uh, a system. Uh, it's, it's what we're in. And if uh, you can't feel it, then my type of presentation should not interest you. If you believe that everything is in order and that uh, you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps, all those uh, slogans and, and sayings that they put out on television and in records and music and stuff like that, well, you're really being a bamboozled. That's the only way I can put it. You're being bamboozled. You really don't know what's going on. So it'd be best if you just step out of this because you're not ready to move up to a higher, a, a, a true, as they would say, a de jure government. You've been living in a de facto government. So let's get started and go back to uh, 1776 and come forward. Now, uh, Bev, I would like for yeah. any questions that, uh, that uh, you get or any uh, uh, chat room questions, let's get to them right away because we can learn more by discussing issues rather than me giving straight presentations on issues. Okay. Okay, so if you get any okay. calls or anything like that, let's stop and go into it. There's also a second part of our show today that we will probably get to, and that's I can mention it now, because finance is the biggest problem that Americans have today, finance. And the debt is rising so fast that we are suffering trying to pay the debt and don't really know why we owe the debt. It's, it's, it's ironic that nobody is really asking the question, how do we owe so much money? What, what's going on with this government that there's so much debt? Well, it all started uh, probably in 1680, 1660, or let's go back to 1663, which was the, the uh, uh, signing of the proclamation line by King George III, which stated that all Europeans, frontiersmen, uh, pioneers, are not allowed to cross the uh, uh, Allegheny Mountains. And you know the Allegheny Mountains run all the way from Nova Scotia area all the way down through the Carolinas. And that whole region of mountains they were not allowed, and they have never repealed, repealed that. Uh, the, the, the corporation government has, has made statements that they're uh, doing certain things, but they don't have any justice to do, to do anything. Turn it up. Yeah. They don't have any, any justice to do anything because they're not a, a, a bona fide government. You know? So if we go back to 16... If we go back to 1663 and come forward, it was put in place that there would be a plantation set up in the United States. This continent would be, would be taken over, invaded by Europeans, uh, supported by the government of Great Britain, which its uh, founding uh, government was in the New York area in the beginning, was in the New York area. 
and they were pushed out and all flags were removed from the United States in the wars of 1812. And England or the British, the Europeans, moved to the island of uh, England that's out there today. And it's important for you to know that England is a rock. All it is is a rock, the top of a mountain. Uh, there's nothing there. There's no resources, nothing. But yet England runs all your history talks about England. So that, that's a question that you should be asking. How did they have so much power when they had no resources? They had no way of, 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 of affording the, the wars and what they did, the way they moved around. Well, they set up this government in the United States known as United States of America. And they did it in a coincide. They coincided that government with a, a original government known as the Continental Congress, or, if you will, the United States. Now, that sounds complicated, but if you've got a piece of paper, just write it down. Take a look at it. We're talking about one segment being the Continental Congress, the United States. And then we're talking about a second section known as the United States of America. There were several presidents in this United States Continental Congress way before Ron. the Europeans showed up. Yes, Ron. Yeah. Ron. Okay, yeah. now this Continental Congress, were these Continental. the so-called uh, Indians, as they call, I mean, us, the Moors? Yes, yes. Okay. The United States was ran by Moors all the way up to 1859, 1860. And that's when they begin to politically start what we know as the Civil War. And that was another man-made, uh, uh, I'll go back to earlier, but I want to say in, uh, when they declared war in uh, 1861, the Moors, Lincoln was a Moor. The Moors ran everything. The government was controlled by Moors. And those Moors were not black totally. There were mulattoes, there were mis, uh, a miscegenation, a lot of marriages, white, black, a lot of things went on. But those that had melon in their skin, they were known as Moors. After 1776 and after the walkout of Congress, United States government, that's when all of the devilment began to start. Okay, so that's... Hold on to that thought for a minute and go back to uh, 1776 and those areas back there. The Europe, the uh, 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 England was very powerful. They had the Iroquois Confederation, which was a multitude of, um, um, let's call them, um, uh, Native Americans, Native Americans who had tribes. We lived in, as tribes in tribal governments in those days. It was a tribal government. The Continental Congress was only held on one-year terms, and they only went in session once in one year. If something uh, 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 dangerous or interesting come up, they may have met more than once. But basically, it was set up just for one a session and a one-year term for the presidents and congresspersons. And you must keep in mind that there was peace in this land, peace in this land, prior to the coming of the Europeans. When, when, when Columbus came in in 1492, uh, the they forgive you, when they came in, they thought they were actually in heaven because everything was so peaceful. Everyone loved each other. There was honor of, among the people. But once the European got here and began to mix and began to steal and rape and loot, and you know the stories of Cortez and, and uh, Ponce de Leon, all of those so-called uh, 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 invaders that came into the country, they came in for the purpose of ripping off the country. Once the word got back that people lived here, the Pope stepped in and gave a sanction for all those that came this way, if they did not believe in Catholicism, you had a right to kill them. 
And Montezuma, oh, they got some good movies that give you that type of history. You really didn't know what you were looking at. But there was a good one, uh, Montezuma, I can't think of the full name of it, but uh, Montezuma was a, a, a king down in the uh, Caribbean area that had plenty of gold, plenty of gold. And those uh, cartels and those people uh, came in and killed and looted and took everything. So if we move forward as we begin to progress into this new, quote, unquote, de facto government known as United States of America, when they, after the world, after uh, the Civil War was started, they came in with all of their money, bought off all of the politicians that they possibly could. They shut down the government by having their paid politicians walk out of Congress and shut it down completely. And and they never, they call it a, a S-I-N-E-D-I-E. Uh, I, I, I can't pronounce it. But it, it means that it was shut down without uh, uh, without a, a date for it to return. And every cons- uh, uh, co- congressional Congress since 1861 has been de facto fictitious. It never existed. It can't go down in history because it never existed. So the new government that they built, this damn thing called the United States of America, is what they put in its place. And then they begin to make everyone, especially the, the uh, aliens, or, or the, let's call them the natives of this country, they had to go to school. And it was important for the natives to go to school because, and they, and they had it set up, what we got today is known as public schools today, which is free, quote, unquote. But they had to put you in school to teach you a new form of government and make you forget the old form of government. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a hell of a plan, just like today. It's difficult for any family today to have a family reunion. If you ever tried it or ever went to one, the, the, the organizers all complain that they do not get cooperation from the family to do these things. And the reason for that is that the government uh, uh, does not want uh, family reunions because they don't want the secrets of their devilment to be told orally, to pass down from time to time. Most of us don't even know our grandparents. We never go see our grandparents or some that are fortunate to have great-grandparents, they never go and listen to the stories they tell as to what really happened in the late 18 and early 1900s. So we're suffering today from the, the same process that was put in place in 1861. And now we so, fight each other. Go ahead. Yes. So let me see if I understand. So in 1861... Uh, they came and they shut down the government that was already here. Yes. Well, but but they came over in six. Well, in four. Well. Yep. Really early. early. No, the corporation started before then. It started in 1663. Correct. Yes. Yes. The corporation was already started, but it had not come into the United States into this continent. It, it, it was started with the Rothschilds uh, up in uh, up in uh, New York area today, which is known as England or Great Britain. So you got to visualize that all countries started in the United States. In this hemisphere, all countries started over here. And this country, by having a constitution, is the only country on earth that has a constitution. Other countries have charters, they have treaties, they have agreements to function, but none have a, 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 a constitution, quote-unquote, contract to do their development, to do their work. We as black Americans are the only ones that gave that contract to the Europeans, and all of it was done by a, 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 a mankind, if you will. It was man-made. All of this we're suffering from was put in place way before it happened. Because when you look at this U.S. versus U.S.A., you'll see where 
of the corporations never started until 1871, whereas we were all in place with the contract in 1776. That's almost 100 years prior to the founding of the corporation. You follow me, Beth? Yeah. United States of America was incorporated in, in uh, 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 1871. You can look that up. I'm looking at it right now. It says, uh, starting with the Gettysburg Address in 1864 and the incorporation of the District of Columbia by Presidential Legislation Act of February 21, 1871, under the Emergency War Act and the Reconstruction Acts. You dig it? So what they did, since the country did not have a government, they set up this new process under the Emergency War Act, or, or better yet, the Emergency War Powers Act. And that's why all your life, Beth, and all of your listeners and viewers' lives, they've always lived under a, uh, a war act. May it be war on drugs, war on poverty, war on uh, World War One, World War Two. All of these wars have all came through our lifetime and before because they cannot function unless it comes from the Emergency War Powers Act. Mm. Yes. Now, so with that emergency 18, war, so in 1861 until 1871, the government was shut down. Yes. Yes. Okay, so and they was not living under no no government rule. And Correct. Then in 1871, they incorporated, and that's when uh, they incorporated the United States of America. Yes. But, but all of that period that you mentioned, those nine or ten years, a lot of things went on. Okay? And up to and including the end of World War, I mean, of Civil War, which was declared in 1864. So you still had six years prior to the incorporation. You also had what they call the Immigration, the, the Naturalization Act. Immigration Natural, Naturalization Act of 1870. Now that one was very important because they were establishing white supremacy. They passed an act in Congress that said all Europeans would be known as white persons. Backwood, oh, backwood, white person. Mm, okay, so. And that's and on the book. That, okay. Okay. That's on the book. That ain't me saying it. That's what they said. And they even gave the eastern area of Africa. They said that of African descent could also be known as white persons. Now, you, you brought up a new point, or I brought up a new point, in that persons are people that come from another area into a place where people... We, the people, we're here all the time. That's important. White persons cannot be people. They're not white people. They're white persons. We are ignorant that he let them be, get by with white people. No, white persons. Because you give them a, a sovereignty when you say white people. They don't live here. They belong in another land somewhere else. They don't, they don't belong here. All you got to do is ask them. They'll tell you in a heartbeat, I'm German, my daddy was Irish, that type of language. But why don't you take your butt back where they come from? That's the question. Get out of here. But now with us being so ignorant as to who we are and so much cooperation from our uncle, uncle Remus agents, these black agents, these black preachers, these black uh, 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 boulets, all of these agents that are under the federal government's control, with them talking and teaching, we get lost in the shuffle. As a mass of people, we just get lost. We don't know who we are. And it's so bad today, most of us don't even care. That's how bad it is. Okay? So, is that, is that good enough answer? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
So in that in that nine, ten years, they was getting this corporation together. Yes, they ma'am. Putting things in place. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now let's not forget Reconstruction. Reconstruction started in 1865 and it went all the way to 1875. And what they did during Reconstruction was change the history. They took the word more out of the, the, the language and the books and put Negro in. Because during the Moors regime, white persons were known as Negro. That's a whole different, different story. The word Negro comes from Europeans. Slave comes from Europeans, from Slav, Slavics. We had nothing to do with that. We had work, work contracts. We, 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 we lived on different lands or different ownerships, if you want to call them plantations. We did all that. But when the European got a hold to it and was building this dynasty of this de sure government, known as, not de sure, de facto, de facto government known as the United States of America, he had to hide his devil men. So he took what they call the Reconstruction Era to change all of the books, all of the pictures, those that were black. They made them white. They put white faces in black places. Remember I told you, the original George Washington was a black man. But they used a white face known as Adam Wassenhoff, the founder of the Illuminati. That's something that everybody can look up. His name was Adam Wassenhoff. Don't ask me how to spell it. Kick it out there the best way you can. And what they did, what he did, rather, he used the Illuminati to, to, to create this thing called United States of America and make us believe that we were living in our original Constitution, which we are not. So that's the Constitution. Yes, yes, yes. When they founded, when they founded the corporation, they had to create their own Constitution. They called their Constitution democracy. And I'll ask you now, what is democracy? Everybody talk about we're a democratic government. No, we're not. We in a democracy, and democracy means he who has the big stick rules. Period. But we come from what is known as a republic government, not the Republican Party, a republican government, where your own your creator was your God, or your creator was your government. You, that's why there was so much peace. Because everybody lived under the creation of their creator. But once this new government was set up, you have to go through your government. You've got to go through the preacher, the judge, the police department, the United States government, Supreme Court, all of those of, of entities you've got to go through before you can get to your God and you never make it because you'll be in prison before you get there. Same way they set up Christianity that they had to go through Jesus to get to God. I've always asked, why can't we go straight to God? Nobody had given me a so it's like dumping. So we don't have to go there tonight. But that's the subject that a lot of people should ask that question. Okay? I feel you thinking, baby. You there? <laughs> okay. So a corporation with the legislation established was established with all of the apparatus of a district government, uh, a distinct government, excuse me, created, quote, quotation, incorporated by Presidential Act. Now, you can look up the Presidential Legislative Act of February 21, 1871, the 41st Congress, Session 3, uh, chapter 62, page 419. Now, that's a lie because once they shut the government down, there was not a 41st Congress. There has never been a 41st Congress. They make you think there was. I don't know what number we in today, but none of them means anything because they, they were, it was shut down and never reconvened in 1861. That's why the war broke out. And all of it was by design. The power of the nation of, of, of Moors fought with the 
Iroquois nation of Moors. Iroquois nation of Moors were backed by the European British, the white British. They backed them, the, the uh, what's your name, the, uh, the Vasers, all come out of England. That's, that's how they took over. That's why they set it up, because England itself is nothing but, and I hate to call it an island, it's a rock. Just like Japan is a rock. Nobody questions that. They don't have resources. They don't have gold, oil, diamonds, and all that kind of stuff. Nothing there but a rock. They're lucky to plant flowers, especially in England. They probably have to import dirt just to plant rocks. I mean, uh, flowers. So they have other people resources. Yes. Building yes, the Pope. Yes. Yes. The Pope's the top dog. England is the uh, uh, administrator, and and United States, all of America, is the plantation where all the resources come from. All the monies that we pay, all these taxes we pay, goes to the king, the king and queen of England. That's that's why they're so rich. Yeah. Well, nobody asks those questions. They don't even bring that type of conversation up. You know, they never even talk about how does a country that, that's a rock, how do they uh, have an army? How do they feed themselves? Where does, all that, where does it come from? They don't say it because everything is imported in there. Whatever they need is imported, especially the money. Okay? So if you're looking at this diagram that I gave you, when you talk about the republic, it's only compared to a corporation, which is not the same thing. A republic having its beginning with the colonial resistance against England's uh, uh, a government, the English government. England has always been a thorn in the side in this nation. The king of uh, England, that uh, King George the Third, he's always been a, a prick. Let's call him that, a prick. No one liked him, but he was so powerful that they had to adhere to his, you know, beck and call. And so when they began to, another thing too, there, when they did the Reconstruction era, when they were changing the history and putting themselves in and taking the black man out, they definitely had to protect England of all the dirt that England was doing. They had to be sure and get that away from the book. So that it would never be told that what they did to take this country. That's why it's so difficult for us as, to, as blacks to find our history because it, it was so much devilment between them that it, it's almost difficult. So our archives come from our our uh, oral history. Our history is oral. That's why they had to figure out a way to get the man out of the house. In every sense, every listener and viewer has been here. The, na the main purpose of the government, or one of the purposes of the government, was to split up the black family. And they're doing a damn good job. And nobody questions it. They get it? Yeah, because they don't, we don't know. A lot, a lot of us don't know. So, in the 1400s, when yeah. Christopher Columbus first came over here, that was under the rule of King George the Third. Yes, yes. Okay. But he didn't come under the jurisdiction of King George. He came under the jurisdiction of of the Pope. But uh, the but the but the uh, uh, Spanish Queen financed him to come over, so that the Spaniards could give their homage to the Pope or whatever. I haven't studied that history, but Spain uh, uh, sponsored. Uh, Columbus. And once he discovered that there was gold, all hell broke loose. And if you recall, especially when I went to school, they said Christopher Columbus was the biggest idiot that ever got on a boat. Because all of his records and his logs, all they talked about were storms. So if you're a good captain, your main factor is to stay away from storms. And then when he, he began to write, when he got to the lands of of the Caribbean, when he ran into those tribes, the Caribs and the 
uh, Ramos, Ramos, as they call him, he began to, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. So he took some back to show the queen of, of, of Spain that he wasn't lying when he said these people are from God. They're so pure. They don't have any negativity in them. But once those Europeans got through with them, Lord help them. And we've been on the downside ever since that European come in. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. okay. okay, the major so opposition. That's why, wait, wait a minute. I'm, so when they when they first came over here, that's I, I saw a documentary, and they were talking about when the first people that came over, it was all about Christianity. It was all about the Bible. So that's yes. why they came that way because of the Pope. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Okay. And the Pope, and as you know, they say the Pope is God on earth. They right. say that. To so he had a lot of power, the Pope did. But see, this is strange. There was no Vatican then. You know when the Vatican was founded? <laughs> Mussolini tried to make a deal with the Catholics during World War One, And he gave up uh, some land in Italy. See, the, the Vatican is like hand traffic. It's probably anything you have dragged. It's a little bit crazy. But it's a country. They gave it all of its charters and all of its agreements to be a country. And I've been there. I've been to the Vatican. I've seen that. I've seen it's rich as cream, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. They got some stuff in there that will make your head spin all the way around. And when they talk about that painting on the ceiling, you've never seen anything like it. Oh, it's, it's beautiful, I'm telling you. They got big statues in there. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. A basilica, uh, some kind of St. Mary's or something. I don't know. I don't live. I ain't in that stuff. But England was always hated. And a major opposition against the British control began with the Stamp Act, established by British Parliament on, on March 2nd, I mean, March 22. This is to this date, 1765, taxation without representation, followed by the the Declaratory Act, the Boston Massacre of 1770, and the the Boston Tea Party, or the the Tea Act, passed by Parliament on May 10th, 1773. All of these, these, these wars and fighting went on prior to the Declaration of Independence. On September 5th, to October 25 of 1774, of 12 colonies, all but Georgia, and we got to talk about that, sent 56 delegates to Philadelphia to participate in the First Continental Congress, 1776. The purpose of the First Continental Congress was to debate and plan a unified response to British policy and action. Now, I must tell you that the 13 colonies that started prior to 1776 was a combination of Europeans and Moors. I got this right. Europeans and Moors. And the colonies were not uh, cities, as you would think. The colonies were corporations that come in here. And if you you don't believe it, just look up. 13 colonies, and then look up 13 corporations and see what they did. All of them were, 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 were corporations that were put on the East Coast. They had agreement with the Moors to come in and set up those corporations. And that's very important because that's how most of the Europeans got up into that Philadelphia, all those uh, uh, 13 colonies that we call them today. Philadelphia, Massachusetts, uh, uh, what else over there? Virginia, Delaware, all of those nations, excuse me, all those states that were called the 13 colonies. No, those were 13 corporations. And they were put in here. So when they came in, British, Britain that was already here said, hey, we want some of that money you bring it in here. Now, all this stuff went off way before the United States of 
America was even founded. Because they're talking about now the Continental Congress, the first uh, Continental Congress was held in, uh, what did I say, 1774. Um, I'm looking at it. I just, I just read that. But all of that early stuff is... is is shaking. Uh, when I say mm-hmm. shaking, it's it's not clear to me. And the more I study, the more I see things that make it clear. But I know for a fact that the country was ran and owned by blacks. But the blacks lived up between the Allegheny Mountains and the Rocky Mountains, from Alaska all the way down to Argentina. They were black. The Europeans came in on the East Coast, and they met Moors on the East Coast. They made agreements and treaties with the Moors on the East Coast. And when Britain saw that happening, which was what we know today as New York, when they saw that happening, they moved in to get some of the money. And they began to put taxes and stamp acts and different things, Boston Tea Party and different Boston Massacre, all those things. Because you know the first uh, uh, casualty of the Boston Massacre was a black dude named Christmas Addict. So, so their history says he was a Moor. So, hey, I, I can't argue with none of that. I'm just trying to clarify why I'm in this position today. And the more I understand what went on then, I know what I have to do now in order to free myself. And to free yourself, you must figure out the economic stranglehold they have on us, especially since 1933 when there is no money. How are we still in debt if there's no money? There's an answer. Okay, we'll get into that. Uh, they push me on that the next second hour, and, and okay. I, can, I can flip into that. But we're talking about a country that's the most powerful country on earth and do not have a true currency. How do they do that? There's no money, nothing but paper. Very interesting. Okay, so when you start reading this U.S. versus U.S.A., or for better purposes, let's call it what it is, they call it the original versus the corporation. We are struggling today. The Moors are struggling today to get back to the original. We're fighting our own people who have these these educated minds who were educated into the corporation system and they don't believe that it even exists, a original corporation. They tell you things that the corporation tells them, such as there's no more Constitution. We don't recognize the Constitution. That's a lie. The Constitution is dormant because of the ignorance of our elite, bourgeois, black intelligentsia that think they are on the right track by being over on the corporate side, which is no better as a public side. And that's where a lot of this phony money is that keeps us in debt because they know how to create debt, which creates money. But we'll talk about that in the next hour. So now right. you've got the republic versus the corporation. And we're jumping through time, but the corporation, I mean the original side, has a true history of progression from 1776 to 1861 when they declared the Civil War. And everything changed after 18, not 1761, 1861. And everything changed dramatically after 1871 when they literally incorporated Washington, D.C. Okay? Now, they, if you look up um, the corporate officers, of uh, the, the United States of, of America. They got all of it here. You can go find it. Uh, the United States is a district, the District of Columbia. The United States of America is the District of Columbia. However, when they 
incorporated, they 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 you can give you can give different names that you want your corporation to be called. And they'll say things like, Our corporation is called United States of America, but any derivative of. So that means United States, US, USA, District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. You know, United States of America has gugogs of names that totally confuses the masses. Because when you mention the names, they all say, well, that's what I'm talking about. But it's not what they're talking about. The only way you can really see it is they write it down, because if it belongs to the corporation, it's in all capital letters. And if it belongs to the original Constitution, is in upper and lower caps. Now, you may not, well, I'll keep going. All right? United States uh, permanent government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. So Michigan is a state, and United States of America or Washington, D.C., or United States is a foreign country to Michigan, Indiana, Illinois. They united that in, in 1932, no, no, 1928, five years, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. From 28 to 32, they, in their development under the Geneva Convention, they united the states, and all the states signed up that they wanted to be a part of a unity known as United States. Man, oh man, I just thought about that. But prior to that, they were all states. Michigan, Tennessee, all of those were right. countries. So United right. States... And that, is, is that why I heard uh, on the news yesterday, I think it was Wisconsin, is going for its sovereignty. They want to separate from the United States of America. Yes. And I think the count, you're right, yes. And I think the count today is 21 states have already withdrawn from the United States of America. Because they want, they don't withdraw like like uh, Alaska jumped out completely and Hawaii jumped out completely. Those are nations on their own. But what you're talking about are, because we live on the continent, we become sovereign independent of the sovereign, independent of the United States of America. And that's real so, tricky. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, so just say we're in Michigan and we become sovereign. So that means that we have no connection to Washington, the District of Columbia? Yes, Columbia. yes, yes, yes. But now let's... Let's differentiate what you just said. Let's differentiate, differentiate you as, as better from the dirt of Michigan. The dirt of Michigan says it wants to be sovereign of, away from the United States of America. You have a choice. Now listen carefully. You can stay a 14th Amendment citizen and be a citizen of the United States of America. Or you can say, I'm a ward of the state of Michigan. Or you can say, I'm sovereign. I don't want neither one of you sissies. Both of you are foreign to me. Right. <laughs> and more than okay. saying that, Michigan is foreign to me, and United States District of Columbia is foreign to me. Now, that's confusing, but I think I gave it to you where you understand anyway. Mm -hmm. So you don't so want to really... Like, so it's like leaving from one plantation to another. You're leaving from the District of Columbus plantation, the United States of America, and if you go with Michigan, uh, who separated, then you are on their plantation. But you yes. saying that we have to be sovereign and separate from both. Yes, 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 yes. And it's all a mental thing. It's all a mind thing. None of the rules, in, all the rules in MCL that you see in Michigan and the laws and regulations of Michigan belong to Michigan citizens. I'm not a Michigan citizen. 
I'm sorry. So it does not pertain to me. If I keep, if I want to say I'm a Michigan citizen, then the laws of Michigan belong to me. But see, everybody in this country cannot say what Ron Marsh just said because they're not indigenous. I am, my status is indigenous. You got some Negroes that are going to say, well, I don't, I don't know what that is. I want to be a Negro, so I'm a Christian, so I belong, I'm a Michigander. That's okay, that's your business. That ain't me. I'm not that. I am indigenous. I come out of the land. I was here before Michigan. Michigan was only founded in 1726. We just discussed some, some, some areas and territories that went on way well before there was a Michigan. <laughs> so why would I want to join Michigan? Especially with this racist government they have here with Snyder and that punk or why would I want to be a part of that? You dig it? But, but anyone that comes in as an alien, which would be an immigrant, they have to sign papers and become a citizen of the United States of America who sends them into states to live, and all of that's hooked up. If they start talking like I talk, they'll import them people overnight. They'd be gone. Boom. That's why I told you last week that the immigration laws are the rights of immigration you have to be an upstanding immigrant for five years. My last number was five years. Somebody called and said it was 10. But my number was five. You've got to be an upright citizen for five years before you qualify for citizenship of the United States of America. Back in the day of, of George Washington, the European was so rowdy, it took 14 years for it. it was the highest number that I saw was 14 years of good behavior in order to even apply for citizenship. You dig it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all, keep in mind, all the people that don't look like you have papers to get in here. All of them. You and I are the only ones that don't have papers. Nobody asks for papers. Why is that? If we come over on the ship, we should have some papers to show we got off the ship. Right. Okay? Say so the Europeans say they come over on the ship, they gotta go through the Statue of Liberty, they're giving paperwork to come into this country. And if they if they violate a law, they send their butt back where they come from. You ain't heard of deporting, deporting no black kids back to Africa. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, what the hell is going on here? We don't have papers. We ain't never had papers. None of our people have papers because we've been here all the time. we got to get that in our head. So none of this trash belongs to us. We have been indoctrinated by brainwash to think we are part of this bullcrap. And it's killing us to, to strive to be a part of it. It's killing us. And we're dying today because we're trying to be good Americans. That's the damnedest thing in the world. Ain't no such thing as a black good American. That's an idiot. Shoot him on sight. <laughs> All right, I'll be nice. I'm going to be nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, in, in 1775, the Second Continental Congress convened in Philadelphia. That's where I want to go next. Delegates from 13 colonies were present. After signing the Declaration of Independence on, on Je uh, July 4th, 1776, and winning the Revolutionary War, this is all live, uh, which ended with the Paris Agreement, Peace Agreement. Now, that's a real good treaty that everyone should look up. It's called the Paris Peace Treaty. See, when the Europeans found out that they could not beat us, we never lost a war. They would always come up with a treaty. That's why, that's why there's so many treaties. Because you're not, the European always wanted to have a treaty so he could circumvent the treaty. He couldn't beat us in, in war. He couldn't beat us in bloodshed. That's why he's so afraid of us now. He does not want us to know who we really are because we can, can, can sustain his power. Because you know he's been trying to kill us ever since we've been here. 
If it wasn't alcohol, it was drugs. If it wasn't drugs, it was uh, the Vietnam War, all black and on Front Street, all that kind of stuff. They've been trying to wipe us out for a long time. So that Paris Peace uh, Treaty is what they used to stop the Revolutionary War. And it was signed by King George, who parted with the Northwest Territory. We live in the Northwest Territory. He had to give up the Northwest Territory there in order for them to stop the Revolutionary War, which the unsettled, uh, which was unsettled. That means that the European was not there. When they settled something, that means the Europeans had the right to walk in there and steal and loot. But the Northwest Territory, where we live today, which is five states, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and uh, uh, it, I mean, Indiana, Ohio, it's five, Wisconsin, five states, and a third of Minnesota, all of that was one territory known as the Northwest Territory. And it is rich with history. Chief Pocahontas, not Pocahontas, Chief Pontiac come out of that area. Okay. Custer with his, with his lying, cheating, dirty. Oh. He come from Monroe, Michigan, and was sent in here as a general to kill the natives. He told them, they told him and, and, and the other generals and colonels, don't take them prisoners, don't run them off the land. Kill them, because we don't want to go to court, because we can never win, because the land has never been settled, which, which means they don't have a treaty to get in here. That's heavy stuff. So they call any land that the Europeans not wanted unsettled and was not colonized, another word they use, that they can get in on. They colonized the land. The Northwest Ordinance was set in place in July of, 18, of, of 1887 to govern the territory until such a time the territory became states united with the initial 13. So they had to figure out how they could settle, colonize, steal, loot, murder, take the Northwest Territory and make it into states that would unite back with the 13 colonies. That's what we have to stop. And it's very important because you need to know how did they do that. They did it through wars and peace treaties. Well, here's a big one here. At the, Re at the revolution, the sovereignty de devolved on the people. Yep. And they are truly the sovereigns of the country. The people are the sovereigns. Not the state, the people. But they are sovereigns without subjects. They have more to govern uh, uh, but themselves. They have no, none to govern but themselves. That's why it was so pure. But they govern themselves. The citizens of America are equal as fellow citizens and as joint tenants in the sovereignty. Sovereignty is the right to govern a nation or state sovereign is a person or persons, oh, this is so heavy, in whom that resides, that, that resides. So each person is a nation. Each oh, person are. is a nation. Yes, because you're sovereign to go govern yourself, and you're responsible for your own uh, uh, shortcomings, for your own responsibility. You are your own responsibility. Now, you can unite through articles of confederation with other nations, or you can take your family and create a larger nation. That's what they did. And each nation is a country in itself. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the top dog is one that governs the, the, the nation. He can make agreements and treaties with other nations in order to survive. So just say that everybody on the west side of Detroit came together and each person uh, came together and they became a nation. 
and just say that everybody um, on the south side of Chicago came together, and they became a nation. So the nation and the people in Detroit can connect with the people in Chicago, and they can form uh, a nation together. Yes, that what but, you, but the way you said that would cause a mass confusion because you, you left out that the nation started with one person. It would be you. If you be the mother of the nation. Now, if you get married, that person you marry would want to be a part of your nation. So that's two. Mm-hmm. And that two becomes one. Now you have children. All of your children become a part of the nation. But each child is its own nation. But he's governed by the mother of the nation, which is you. Now, if you want to travel to Chicago and meet Cousin Fred, if you think Cousin Fred is cool and y'all can come up with some type of agreement to get along, Cousin Fred got to go back to his, his nation and talk to all of his subjects in there because he knows he want to do it, but he got to make sure everybody else in it. And then he comes back to you and says, yes, we can do this. So now you unite and you went from one person to the family of Beverly. Now you've got uh, 10,000 people, not 10 million. 200 people, so they all come together. And you are responsible for your side, and he's responsible for his side. So if anybody gets out of line by any way, it's up to you to tell him that Josephine down there is, is doing some stuff ain't too cool, and he has to check that out. That's, how, that's why there's so much peace. Mm. But the way you said it, it would create chaos. But I don't want to join with everybody on the north side of Detroit. I don't know these people. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Is that how is, is that how it's set up similar with the Washita Nation and they have yes, the, the lady that's in charge? Yes, um, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And we all are learning what I just told you. A lot of them don't want to learn it because they're out there trying to do their own thing. Because her sons even went out and did some, some dirty stuff with the Nigerians because they wanted to make some, some good money. And she refused to even acknowledge them. And that, that was a big uh, 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 hassle, big old hassle. I don't need to go into detail, but anybody that's a more, a watch it all more, know what happened when she told them no. Now, are you familiar with the nation, the United Nation Agenda 21? Not by name. What is it about? Oh, okay. Well, no, someone in the chat room was saying we have another big problem, and that's the United Nation Agenda 21. Well, maybe you can ask them, answer and ask them, give us a little more detail on that. I don't know. Well, I know a bit a, we could go ahead. I know there's been some, some, see, everything that I'm teaching, I'm a senior. So everybody needs to hear this so it can be passed on and everybody keeps understanding what we have to do in order to get free. Unification, the way that they're putting it in the books and putting it out, it'll never work. We got to unite. I don't know these people. You know, we got to do it on our own first. We got to face our own creator and become pure at heart. Then you begin to grow into these unifications or these so-called confederations. You dig it? It, it right. takes time, trust, and, and everything to do that. Now, the people out there trying to do it in other ways. I have no idea what this 21 thing is, but I have read and heard that, they, that they're trying to do certain things, but it's difficult for it to work because we are unique people. You know, that. Every country on earth has a treaty with the Moors. No other country can say that. No other nationality can say that. And that treaty is called Treaty of Peace and Friendship. We're the only ones that understand peace and friendship. Europeans, look at this condo. How can you understand peace and friendship and drop the atomic bomb on non-whites in World War II? You see what I'm saying? Right. And that's just one of the devilmen. They went in there and killed Gaddafi. They went in and killed uh, Assad Hussein. All of that kind of stuff. 
I'm just naming some off the top of my head. They destroy governments all over the country. How do they know about peace and friendship? How do they know even call themselves civilized? Civilized people don't do that. So in the beginning, if you did not have a treaty with a peace and friendship, you were known as an outsider. You were known as a, 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 a enemy, and they would shoot you on sight. Well, I right, Bev, I got to take a break. Okay. We're going okay. To- let me make one All comment. Right, now, before, before we get started, Ron, uh, give the people your email again. Okay. I want to start using Ron March um, Show. Ron March Show at Yahoo.com. Ron March Show at Yahoo.com. Okay. Uh, I'm having trouble with the other. Uh, I love the email address. I'm having trouble. So let's stay with Ron Mark Show. Ron Mark Show at yahoo.com. Are you still now, giving your classes? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll be there next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Ron, uh, Ron Mark Sh- at Ron Mark Show, what you're looking at now, 6 p.m. next week. Next Tuesday, also Wednesday at 6 p.m., and Saturday coming up at 4 p.m. hope I gave that right. Now, you say you'll be where at Tuesday now? I'll be on in in, uh, Highland Highland Park. My classes are held in Highland Park on Tuesdays on Woodward Avenue, 12511 Woodward. 12511 Woodward at Mandy's Knowledgeable Restaurant Bookstore. Okay. Yep, Mandy, N A N D I. Mandy's Knowledgeable Restaurant Bookstore on Woodward. Okay. 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 All right. Let me do a, a, a big jump in time, but before I do, I want to leave some very important information that will help me jump through time. When the United States of America was founded in 1871, it was a corporation, but there were no subjects. Let's, let's listen carefully. There were no subjects. It was an empty corporation known as the United States of America. When they passed the fourth, no, when they created the 14th Amendment, which was never passed, you cannot pass any amendment after 1861 because there was no legal government. So what they did, they created a 14th Amendment. They created several since then. But the 14th Amendment was created only to give the United States of America subjects. That's important, very important. All of that is de facto. All of that is fictitious. So they said that Christians, Negroes, colors, blacks, all immigrants, all aliens, all inhabitants of this uh, 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 continental United States were subjects of the 14th Amendment, which belonged to Washington, D.C. So overnight, can you visualize what I'm saying, Ben? Overnight, they created millions of citizens with pen, all by design. You get that, Ben? Right, I got it. All right. Now, there was a need since since that government had no monies. There was a need to try and create some type of monies between 1871 and 1933 or 1928. They could not create any monies. So what had to happen 
the remaining moors that were in place and the United States original government that was in place took all of the resources away from the fictitious government known as United States of America. And there was nothing they could do about it. And I don't know exactly how that went down, but I definitely know that the cowboy movies of Jesse James and Frank James and the Westmacaller brothers, all of those crooks that was robbing Wells Fargo, those were true stories. And they were robbing the gold. They were stealing the gold. Those crooks worked for the United States of America. Yeah. <laughs> you can visualize it. Just think about it. They never caught us. Because they worked for the government, the new government, and their job was to steal the gold. They knew they could not use the gold because it did not belong to them. So from 1928 to 1933, they created a program, and they called that program the New Deal. And in that New Deal, they had a redemption program that actually created money. Oh, it's so deep that, you know, you don't really have to go through a whole lot of madness to understand it. But there was lawful money, and then there is legal money. You listeners and viewers out there have nothing but legal money. There's no ounce of truth to the monies you have in your pocket. It's, you could really call it, uh, uh, what's that? I, I call it polyandry, if I said they never heard of polyandry. Uh, monopoly. Call it monopoly money. Fiat. Yeah. Fiat. It's called fiat currency. Okay? So so let's go back to the, to the U.S. versus U.S.A. You go down, you'll see it. It says lawful money, silver coins, silver dollars, a standard unit of value contains 90% silver. Gold coins co contain 90% gold. Spanish mill dollar called the real dollar. And it's a fractional part such as the medial, half real. Then the warehouse receipts of certificates of re redeemable in gold or silver, such as silver certificates and gold certificates are not in itself money, but it, it is an exchange for a specific amount of lawful money. Some of you have seen lawful money. It went out, the last uh, uh, lawful money went out of circulation in, in, in 1976 under the, the Richard Nixon regime. They took all the certificates, the the, the Silver certificate dollar and the silver certificate five dollar. They took all that out of circulation. They created what we know today as fiat money. The Federal Reserve notes, bonds, other notes, evidence of debt, tokens, clad, coinage having no inherent asset value, a unit of debt in a classless society electronic banking, all of that is phony money. The first coin issued, going back to the real money, lawful, the first coin issued by an authority of the United States were the, the Fuji coin of cents. I never heard of that before my time. That was back in 1787. Over on the other side, they created the, the, the coins they could not uh, eliminate the coins. So the only true funds in America today is coins. Nickels, dimes, quarters, 50 cents. But you very seldom use that to pay a debt because it's too uh, cumbersome to do so. So they created this fiat money. It was issued by the Federal Reserve Bank. A private corporation has nothing to do with no, anybody's no. government. Yes, ma'am. No. Back in, in 1933, this is before that, we had, our money was backed by gold and silver, correct? Yes, yes, ma'am. 
Okay, yes. and then during that time, that that's when uh, I think it was Roosevelt. Yeah, uh, he gave this executive order, right? That right. everybody had to turn in their money, their gold yes. and their silver. Yes. And, and yes. this is when they created the Federal Reserve, this new corporation. Well, the Federal Reserve was created 20 years earlier, 20 years earlier. All of this, try to keep earlier. in mind. Uh, no, in the United States, try to keep this in mind that all of this that we're talking about was on paper way back in 1663. It was on paper. It's all by design. It's coming forward. The Rothschilds and all of those rich families, the Rothschilds were the ones that were the richest during that time. They had all this set up. All of it was set up. It just took a timetable for it to be put in place. So the Federal Reserve was set up in 1913. It's owned by foreign bankers and investors. Federal Reserve has nothing to do with government. So that, that green thing you got in your pocket has nothing to do with anything but paper. You believe that it's, it's money because of the uh, monopoly type game that is played and the respect you get out of those green things, you believe is real money. It's not. It's only a piece of paper. And it's called a note. A note is a debt. Car note, house note, table note, all of these are debts. A Federal Reserve note. A Federal Reserve was set up as it is today to keep track of the debt. Got it? You got it. All right. Federal Reserve is a continuation of the of the of the English crown of England. The Federal Reserve set up. It was put in here in place. Remember I told you. When they founded the so called Washington DC, all of that was funded by the international bankers. What we're going through is not a uh, uh, side by night operation. This is a planned scheme to steal our land. Keep that in mind. The land belongs to us, black people. And all of this was set up to make you give it to them and let them live here in peace. So between Christianity, love thy neighbor, and the benefits and, 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 and privileges they give you, you let them live here in peace. And they're the most ruthless individuals on the face of the earth. Unbelievable. But it's, it had worked so far. It had worked. Okay? I'm not going to go through this entire piece on this, but I'll tell you this. You were taught in school that the dollar had was an S. Just saw it. An S with two bars going through it was defined by law act of April April 1792. It had, it, it, they had set up what a dollar was. 371, 371.5 grains of pure silver, which was the amount contained in a $1 silver coin. All of this was set up. When they came back and made this new stuff, even the coins are phony. But the coins have reverence because the coins are in the Constitution. Are you there, Beth? I'm here. I hear. Oh, I'm okay. Here. I heard a buzz. I thought it was gone. Yep. <laughs> so, if I ask any, if I was near any one, uh, any one of your listeners at this time, and I ask them how many bars is on a dollar bill, they'll probably tell me it's two. And I tell you what, when you was born, there was never two. There was always one. It stopped in seven, uh, 1972. It stopped, excuse me, 1976. The two bars disappeared, and it came back with one bar. So now you have to ask, what does the one bar represent that the two bar does not, or vice versa? Two bars is real. One bar is phony, known as fiat. Now, you live in a government that's fictitious. 
You live in a society that is, 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 is murdering you, literally murdering you. They're taxing you to death. You need to study economics to figure out how can we get out of this. Everything that's happened to us today as of the, today's date, believe it or not, we ask for it. Beth, you hear me, Beth? Yeah. So we did Everything that's happened today, we have asked for it. And I can prove it by your prison. 99.9% .9 of all prisoners agreed to go to jail to a program that they invented called plea bargain. <laughs> and they trick you. Make you think you're going to get 100 years. When you didn't commit a crime, there's only two crimes a sovereign can commit. Only two. Number one is murder. Number two is damage someone else's property. That's all the crimes you can commit. That's it. Everything else is color of law. Not real law, color of law. All statutes, ordinances. Of, 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 of everything that's passed, bills and legislation, all of that is BS, known as color of law. It looks like it's real, but it is not. And if you study each one of the so-called quote-unquote crimes, you'll see it's not a crime. If I say to you, robbing a bank is a crime, you can't steal money. I'll say to you, where's the money? You'll say to me, greenbacks. I'll say to you, that's not money. It's fiat. You can't, you, you can't put me in prison for stealing a piece of paper. Now, you may send me to prison for, for having a gun, or you may send me to prison for uh, uh, slapping someone violently, as, you know, like a, in a robbery, something like that. But you can't send me to jail for stealing money unless... You agree to go to jail for stealing money. And that makes the difference. Because if you are ignorant out of lunch and they tell you you're going to get 25 years for robbing a federal bank, you're going to go out and pay $100,000, a million dollars to try to stay out of jail. And when that money is gone, your butt is going to jail. Period. So I'll ask the question, where's the money? Who stole money? Nobody. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, now I'm a little confused. Uh, between 1933 and 1976, you said that in 76 they only added the one bar where we had two bars, so that's the fiat money. But in 1933, we didn't, from there to 76, we didn't have any money anyway, right? That's when they brought the, the fiat money in. Wrong. If you look up June 5th, 1933, uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt told everybody to turn the gold in. Okay. The gold in. They didn't ask for silver. They asked for gold. You got it? Yeah. So it took them from 33 to 73 to get the silver out of circulation. I mean, excuse me. From, from, from 1933 to 1976, it took that long to get the silver out of circulation. The silver or the gold? Silver. Everybody turned the gold in in, in 33 that had it because they said if you're caught with it. I read, I read the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 executive order uh, last week. It said you had to turn it in. But guess what? They were only talking to 14th Amendment citizens. They weren't talking to me. <laughs> I don't know that it's people. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Now, they would have probably kicked my door in and came in, and I'm, I'm struggling and fighting, but I'm going to court now, and I'm going to tell them real quick, well, I'm indigenous. That goal is my goal. You can't take that, and I guarantee you they'll turn me loose. 
Now, their money in 33, once everybody, the 14th Amendment people, turned their money in. So that, that the note from the Federal Reserve, was, was it any good? Was it backed by anything? Yeah, they, they, they replaced it with the Federal Reserve note. It wasn't backed by anything. No, it was a piece of paper. So and I'm trying to figure out, in 1976, is two bars worth money, and one bar is fiat. We did, well, I mean, we didn't, we've been dealing with fiat since 33. No, well, we've been dealing with fiat since uh, the 76. Because oh, silver was in silver was still in circulation all the way up to seventy six. Gold was not. Okay. And okay. some of your one dollar bills had on it uh, uh, certified. I forgot what the wording was, but some of them had certified uh, a dollar uh, one dollar bill on it because it was backed by silver. But after okay. 76, 17, 1976, Nothing was backed by nothing. That's why Nixon said when they busted him on Watergate, one of the last speeches he made, but I did what y'all asked me to do, and that was to take that silver out of circulation. And he was reminding them of that. So don't put me in jail for breaking in on Watergate because I helped y'all. And they didn't put him in jail, but they killed him. But what if he died? I don't know. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Now, we need to understand what did they do to us since we're not citizens. Most of us are not citizens. Most of us have never declared ourselves sovereign, so they, they treat us like 14th Amendment citizens. But there has to be a, a, a recourse. They call it a... Uh, 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 whew. Whew. There has to be a recourse. There has to be an answer to this madness. Everything they do to you, there is an answer. You need to study to find out what the answer is. Now, I'm going to read something to you, and I'm, I'm going to read it to you, Bev, and you tell me uh, what you what what does what does this do to you? Title 18, United States. Of, of, of USC, Section 8. So we're talking about Title 18, USC, United States Code, subsection 8. It's called Obligation of Other Securities of United States Defined. Now, obligation, the definition of obligation is debt. Debt. An obligation is a debt. So I'll read it the way I'm talking to you. Obligation or other securities of the United States, we're going to define what they are. Now, the term obligation or other securities of the United States includes, listen to these words there, all bonds, certificates of indebtedness, national bank currency, Federal Reserve notes, Federal Reserve bank notes, coupons, United States notes, Treasury notes, gold certificates, silver certificates, fractional notes, certificates of deposit, bills, checks, or drafts for money drawn by or upon authorized officers of the United States, stamps and other representatives of value of whatever denomination issued under any act of Congress and canceled United States stamps. Now that sounds like a whole lot of gobbledygook. Yeah. But I wanted you to, now tell me what you got out of that. If, any, if anything, just you <laughs> say it. You get nothing out of it. <laughs> right. I mean, I just heard a lot of debt or something. Yeah, okay. What they're saying is there are other ways to pay for your debt other than Federal Reserve notes. One of those instruments is called a coupon. 
And what did I tell you about the utilities? They sent you a coupon. What did I tell you about uh, a, a credit card? They sent you a coupon. Anything on the bottom of your page that looks like a check is a coupon. Hello? I hear you. <laughs> yes. And guess what? Anytime you stamp a presentment, uh, I told you what a presentment was. Anything that comes in your mail and asks for something is called a presentment. Anything that comes through the mail, federal, the federal mail department, postal service, and they ask you for something, may it be a uh, television note, car note, house note, it doesn't matter. If it comes through the mail, and ask you for a payment is called a presentment. So every presentment can be answered since there's no, think about it now, since there's no money, you can stamp it except for value and send it back. Sign it, date it, and send it back. Now, Everybody say, you're crazy, I've done it, they didn't do it, all of that, yes, 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 I, I, I hear you. But what makes you think they're going to do it without trying you to see how much you know? Number one, you need to understand what laws support that. And I just gave it to you, Title 18 U.S.C. Subsection 8, it says obligations or other securities of the United States include coupons, bills, checks. A bill comes to you. That's a presentment. Sign it. Send it back. That's a bill. Anything for money, you can use any of these instruments. And if you read UCC, oh, Lord, I thought I had it with me. Oh, that might happen. I'm looking at the other one here. If you have UCC, uh, Article 3 of the of, of Uniform Commercial Code, it will tell you that you can use any instrument you want, and they cannot tell you which one to send. Now, they've always told you to send cash, check, or money order. Notice yeah. that cash was not in the listing of instruments. So you think cash means, and that's how, that's how ignorant you are, you don't really know now. So you think cash means greenbacks. It didn't say that. They didn't ask for Federal Reserve notes. They asked for cash. Now, if you ask them what is cash, they're going to tell you Federal Reserve notes. That's against the law. They cannot tell you what to send. Are you getting this back? Yeah, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. It's called Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 1, Section 1, Section 8. I'm looking right at it. It gives you the list of instruments that can be used to pay the debt. And it does not say cash. So through the education system, they made you believe that cash was the greenback, which is known as a Federal Reserve note. And a note cannot pay a note. If you get a car note, how are you going to pay it with a Federal Reserve note? So they couldn't tell you to send a note because you might wake up and say, how can I do that? So they say send cash. And they have the audacity, listen to this, if you think I'm lying to you, they have a density to say on the coupon, return the coupon with cash, check, or money order. Why do they need the coupon? Why can't you not just send a piece of paper with your account and name? You, know, you ain't got to do that. Put it on the check. Write out a check to pay it and then put in the memo the account number and send it. They don't want you to do that because they only get paid once if you do that. But if you send the coupon with the cash check or money order, they get paid twice. Mm. 
Are you getting it? Yes, I'm getting it. I'm it's getting unbelievable. It. It's unbelievable. Now, they're going to fight you. Hear me clear. You need to do research to find out how to make them effective. And I'll tell you now, UCC Article 3, go in there and read. It's against the law for them to refuse any negotiable instrument. And you can do further research to find out there are case laws where they have lost trying to fight it. Because those millionaires that own those corporations don't want you to know what Ryan Marsh is laying on you right now. They don't want you to know that. Because they can't stay super rich by getting two payments just like the DTE gets two payments every time they get the, you make a payment. So you're going to have to threaten and or take their butt to federal court. Title 18 is a federal law. Keep that in mind. You've got to be prepared to go to federal court. And you can do it in a lot of different ways. If you was in Detroit and come to class, we talk about a cover letter. You can put all types of whoop tickets in a cover letter. Let's call them whoop tickets. But you want to put all the laws that they're breaking if they don't comply. You also want to use an affidavit. Or you can put all this in the affidavit. You want to use an affidavit to set up a contract. If they don't accept it, you're going to do this or you're going to do that. Be creative. Don't be a dummy sitting there and thinking like a slave. Think like a free man. Think like a creditor. You are the kingpin. Think of this. And this will set you free. Tender of payment. No monies, no tender can be created unless you sign. And you can get that under Article 3, UCC, Section 3, which is Article 3, 419, instrument signed for accommodation. Nothing works, nothing works unless you sign. That's so why are y'all talking about being in debt? I'm working on mine. I know you're going to ask the question. Ron, are you in debt? Yeah, I'm in debt. Are you dropping bombs? I'm dropping bombs every day. As we speak, I'm getting more information as we speak, and I'm giving it to you as we speak. You're going to have to take their butt to federal court. And you're going to have to tell the federal court what Ron Mark said. And that is, it's against the law for them to send it back. Because there's no money. And they cannot tell me what to send, what instrument they want me to pay it with. Cash check or money order. I didn't even mention money order. Money order is not even in the eight, Article 18. Did he see it? It says bills, checks, or drafts. Somebody in the chat room say we are the bank. Yes, we are. Tell them they are right on the money. Yes, yes, yes. If we don't sign, the bank go out of business. If we don't sign, they're through. Anything got any more callers out there? Uh, it's in the, uh, in the in the chat room. He says they say that our sign it's our signature that creates currency. And he's totally correct. He's totally correct. If you don't sign, there's no currency. He is totally correct. Well, uh, oh. If you have any uh, questions, you can call 347-215-8041. And uh, we are at the top of the hour. But if you have a question, I have a caller from 813-961. 813-961. Good evening, Beverly. Great show. Good evening. Thanks for listening. 
And to your guest, the elder, uh, he's on fire. This is Sister Ngoni again. I w- I'll be brief. I just want him to know I'm not a he, I'm a she. Oh, I'm okay. I'm sorry about that. No problem. But now, I, wanna have, I do have a question, I, but I, I want to tell you just a really briefly. My daughter was being garnished sheets for an old student loan. It was like 18 years old. Whoa, and the, whoa. The bank that did the loan had since gone out of business, blah, blah, blah. So I had been studying about the A accepted for value, and I, I did it for her. And the thing of it is, they don't give you any confirmation. I sent it to the CID, and, uh, you know, but now they don't send you, they, they didn't send me any confirmation whether it worked or didn't work. But here's what happened. When, when I moved, out of state, I hadn't had a driver's license for 10 years because I had been, I, I went and left and went to live in West uh, Africa, in Ghana. I was gone. Okay. And uh, when I came back, I had to start all over, you know, the ground floor. So I, I moved and, and I didn't have any established credit or anything like that. And I'm telling you, I know it had to be that because it's like they rolled a red carpet out for me. Okay. Well, what happened to your daughter on that garnishment? Well, she ended up filing uh, bankruptcy. Oh! And, no, no, no. Well, you know, she can't file bankruptcy on the student loan, but she, it was another situation. She had co-signed for her ex-husband, car, all this kind of stuff. Oh. I, you know, I don't want to tell her business. Oh, slow, but slow she, was, she, slow she didn't trust me to continue the process, so she, it was like, you know, she, she, just, she didn't understand what I was studying and what I was trying to tell her, and she was under so much stress yeah. That she elected to just go ahead and file bankruptcy. All right. Let, now, me, let, me, let me tell you, I tell you something. Mm-hmm. Number one, you said it was a 20-year-old loan. It was 18 years old. All right. Every state has what they call statute of elimination. Uh, yeah, but I'm still and None of them are over no. 10 years. None of them. Like Michigan, six years. But uh, what about George Bush changing the law? That um, student loans, you could, you can't file them under bankruptcy now. He did that in 1995. Didn't I just tell you that every one of them presidents are crooks? They can say no, 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 You need someone to file bankruptcy and be rejected for bankruptcy before you can even repeat what Bush said. You get it? They're crooks. No, I- I've got to ponder on that one. I mean, I understand the difference between the private side and the public side. I don't know a whole lot. I mean, I, you know. I don't, I don't know what cha- miss, miss, miss. I'm not challenging you. I'm trying to go back over what we went through tonight. And I said anything that happened after 1861 is a barefaced lie. Because they created a new government which is completely illegal and treasonous, known as democracy. Bush yes, comes I, understand, out I really do. I understand the difference between the private side and the public side, and I understand the difference between the, uh, the republic and the democracy and the, and the de facto and the de jure. But you see, okay, my problem is, what I don't understand is, okay, like, I got adhesion contracts. I got a, uh, you know, a uh, driver's license, a birth certificate, all that. I haven't, I haven't I, you know, I haven't com- removed myself from from the designation of being in, under the corporation. I'm 66 years old. I'm on Social Security. But, but miss, but miss, you don't have to remove yourself. You didn't create that straw man, so you cannot destroy the straw man. You're going to I know, but I heard that some people say that, I, I, I read about some people that did that, and then they, didn't, they can't get to Social Security. Well, listen to me. I draw Social Security... And I filed every paper that you could imagine to get out from under this trash. You hear me? And, you, and, and you I still get my check every month. Yes. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> yes. But see, you're telling me something that somebody said to you, and I'm trying to tell you, you know, I read, stop doing I read, that. I read, I read about it, you know, but maybe that was propaganda to scare us off, see. It could have been. But you're spreading the scare by telling it on the air. Somebody said this. Bush said that. That's their job to spread that type of venom so that people will be afraid to even try to do it. 
I know people about him changing the law. He's doing what he said. I went and read about it when I was trying to help my daughter with this. It doesn't order. matter if you read about it. You did not challenge it. It's in court. He can say anything he wants. I know. He's a liar. Just like Obama. He's a lying dog. If he don't have on the blue tie, he's, uh, if he don't have on the red tie, he's lying through his teeth. Now, yeah, I, I don't I, care what he thinks. I really do understand that, and like I said, I was trying to help her. It wasn't me, so it wasn't my final decision what she decided right. to do. All that right. was my, you know, my first time being brave enough to try the accepted for value, and, you know, now I, I had a question in the chat room. I want to know, because I had a friend, may his soul rest in peace, that went to the Chicago Fed. I read the Modern Money Mechanics, that document, 42 pages, where it definitely says that, Federal Reserve notes is not money. So I read that myself, okay, the whole okay. thing. Okay. Now, I, he went to Chicago Federal Reserve, and he said there was guards that wouldn't even let him come up the sidewalk, and they told him that they don't have a window for individuals. You have to be a bank. Well, we know we are the bank, but they won't let anybody in. So I want to know, when did they stop redeeming silver? You have to send it to the Treasury Department. I went to the Federal Reserve, and they wouldn't let me off the street. That's why. That's what they, my friend told me happened to him. Yeah, they, yes, they don't have a window for it's it. Because, it's because they don't exist. Federal Reserve is a private corporation. I just I understand said that. that. It's okay. a private banking cartel. And guess what? Karen Hootis just said that the U.S. corporation is about to lose their seat in the International Monetary Fund. Yep, yep, they probably are. And you know why they're losing their seat? Because they won't alleviate the debt. I told you July of last year, the Pope told all of this sisters to balance the budget. And United States corporations refuse to do it because they got a gold mine here with us paying double and triple. So now mm -hmm. they're trying to force them to do it, so they're going to put them out. That's a, that's a threat. Yeah. Well, they, uh, all they have to, do, all they're supposed to be doing is setting off our debt. They're already being set off, but the lawyers go in and file Form 56 and appoint themselves trustees to our account and raid it. That's what they're doing. That's true. But if you're ignorant enough to do it and pay them or, or panic, as you say, that your daughter or your friend did, then you're gonna, they're going to be rich forever. That's no. what I say. We don't she need to like in my daughter, she didn't understand. And ignorant means to not know. So, yes, you know, yes, you yes. are very knowledgeable, yes. knowledgeable like you. So I have to study and come up to par to where you are. I know some things, but I don't know what you know. Yes, I mean, this well, is you know, you know, you know, you know, I don't want to spend the rest of my life behind bars. And you know, let me tell you something. These people are lawless and corrupt. So you can cross yes, all your I's and dot all your T's. And that don't mean you ain't going to run up against some corrupt that's judge true. or something true. when you're dealing the with these people. You have too many times. You, okay, you, the whole that's true. System is corrupt. You, you're fighting against the whole system. So I know. Yes. We're going in I mean, you know, it's, it's not as easy as it's, it's just throwing a bunch you of paperwork out. It's not be easy. No, yes. it's not easy. But I, 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 I get this for educational purposes only. Let me put that in there right now. And I'm giving you rules, regulations, laws that are on the, in the Constitution, not in democracy, in the Constitution. You need to keep your mind focused on the Constitution. And okay, the but I'm confused, sir, I, where I'm confused is you also quoted United States Code, and that's the corporation. Title you're right. right. That's, you, huh? you're, to, you're totally correct. But that, but that code is decide, a fair decisive. And if you look up fair decisive, it means that it's in the Constitution. Okay. They can't do what they did. They can't just take the money out of circulation. It's a stand decisive of, 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 of law, and that's why they call it United States Code. And it what? comes under Title 18. All those titles are stand decisive to the Constitution. And you're totally correct. Now look how astute you are to catch that. Most people never caught that. You got it. So you know what you're talking about. You just need to slow down and read a little bit more on issues <laughs> a little bit at a time, and you'll see what I see. Well, I, 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 I hear you. I, I, it's, it's big. It's a big thing. But, you know, I have followed. You heard of Rod Class? No. Rod Class. Yes, I did. I saw that somewhere. Rod yeah. Class. Rod Class. Go ahead. What about it? He has a talk show. Uh, 
call, and I followed him for about three years. And he, that's where I learned a lot of this stuff, and I went and read because he was like you. He would give out the information. By the way, I took notes when you were talking about the different titles and stuff. And yes. uh, uh, he would give out where you go read it for yourself. So yes. I let followed me, him. Let me, ask you, let me ask you a real quick question. Did you see his show on the 14th? Did I see what? Did you listen to Rod class and show on the 14th? No, I haven't listened to him for a while. I know he's got a federal case up there in the District of Criminals where he parked in the wrong spot and he had a gun, which they call a firearm, which the a firearm, definition of firearm is a 18-inch cutoff rifle. So they're all crooks. I mean, they just don't follow their lawless. <laughs> and yeah. the Supreme Court ruled that you can have a gun, and they haven't obeyed the Supreme Court because the District of Columbia, as you already know, is yeah. a sovereign city. It's, 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 yeah. it's one of the three sovereign you know, Vatican, yeah. London, and the D District of Criminals. They don't have to go by the Supreme Court ruling if they don't want to, I guess. Yeah, you're right, because the Supreme Court is a fictitious court. And, yeah, and the, Treasury, the, the, the U.S. Treasury closed in 1921. And did you know that uh, Eric Holder and when old Hillary Clinton was, the, uh, it now is well, old Kerry, is, uh, uh, what is he, the, the, the Department of State or State Department? And yes, then the, the, what, the one who had the big ears, was it? I don't know who the new one is now. The little Secretary of State. Devil that was over the Treasury. But you see, he is really, the, he works for the IMF. And so they call it the Department of Treasury because the, the Republic Treasury was closed in 1921. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I got you. But all mm -hmm. I, I got to get you to get back to the Constitution, and you need to read, listen to this, the, the Article 3 of the, of the Bill of Rights. Read Article 3, Section 2 of the Bill of Rights, and you'll see where you need to go to file against these people, and they adhere to you when you do it. Okay. Article 3, Section 2. Okay, I, I, got, I wrote it down. Now, I got one more question because I know you know what you're talking about. Now, I, I'm asking a question, okay, because uh, okay. Rod Class said that the 14th Amendment applies to the Congress. And, see, I didn't finish telling you about the State Department, the Treasury. Uh, uh, Geithner was his name, and when Hitler was there, now it's Kerry and Eric Holder. They have to, they have to act, give up their national ID in order to sit in those seats. Yes, they do. And the, the other thing... So I, that's I, why they have to do that. Do you know why? Well, that's what I'm trying to ask. That, that's what okay, I'm trying to ask. Well, I'll, you, I'll tell you why. Because the 14th Amendment was passed by that sick, phony, fictitious Congress. And okay. anyone that lives in Washington, D.C. or the District of Columbia has to adhere to whatever they do. Just like okay. wherever you are, your mayor or your chief of police, they pass, and your city council, they pass laws, you have to adhere to it if you are a 14th Amendment citizen. Okay, but wait, now, you, have a choice to not to my question. You, know, I, you haven't heard my question. Okay, I was so trying to give you back. background to my question. Now, Rod Class says, and I was prefacing it by making the statement about the, those three positions that have to give up their uh, citizen, uh, their, their sovereign or their nationality, okay, to, and take those seats. Okay, so right. the question is, now nah, I didn't forgot the daggone question. It, uh, it'll come. Uh, I thought you asked it. That's why I, I answered it. But no, no I was trying to give you the background. Okay, Rod Class said that the 14th Amendment applies to the congressmen, not us. Under international law, you can't impose citizenship on nobody. I mean, all they did, if that's the case, would be that they took our ancestors from private ownership to public ownership. They can't do that. Yes. So, because right. under the Constitution, slavery is outlawed. So therefore, we're not 14th Amendment citizens. It's the Congress, because Congress has to swear oath to the U.S. corporate constitution. There's two constitutions. All right. So you asked I stated that, but I'm really asking you for confirmation if that's correct information. or if It's that's totally correct. It's totally correct. Totally correct. People are all, all the way through. We're 14th Amendment citizens when we're not. You said congressmen. You said yes, you no, the Congress because they, they, are, they swore oath to the U.S. corporation, not to the republic. Yeah. You see, because stop, the 14th Amendment. Stop, stop, stop for a minute. Let's uh, stop for me. clarification. I stop. read the whole 14th Amendment, and mostly it's about 
commerce. It don't say anything in there about any color of people. It says okay. you are me. subject to the jurisdiction of. That's yeah. all it says. And so, the, I'm sorry. Will you I, stop for one second, please? I'm well, I, I'm not going to ask you to stop. I'm, 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 I couldn't hear you. I was, all right, slow down for one second. Yes, ma'am. You yes, keep sir. asking me about Congress persons that are automatically 14th Amendment citizens. Is that correct? No, not automatically. That 14th Amendment was created, one, it's about corporations, corporate persons, P-E-R-S-O-N, they gave them rights of a person, and the congressmen, he said, are the 14th Amendment citizens because they are subject to the jurisdiction thereof of the U.S. corporation. Stop. You can't stop. 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 Oh, yes, stop. Sir. stop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stop. Stop. Please. Stop. It's totally correct. You keep asking the same thing. It's totally correct. They were elected officials and swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States, which makes them citizens of Washington, D.C. Yes, he's totally correct. Okay, I just want to know if he was telling the truth. So, so we don't fall under that. No. Uh, in the District of have you sworn anywhere? Have you missed? Have you sworn anywhere to uphold the Constitution? No, no, I haven't. And that's why I said right. under international law, they can't impose citizenship on you. you you're totally correct. I keep telling you, you keep answering your own question. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I guess I'll Oh, don't be myself. sorry. I'm asking you to slow down and listen to what you're saying. That's all I was trying to get you to do. But I answered that almost three to, three to five times. Okay, and I said I'll to you, any t- I tell you what you do. I tell you what you do. My, my email address is ronmarkshow. I already wrote it down. <laughs> How about your phone number? <laughs> Have you got it? What? Ron Mark Show. Okay. okay. Email me, and I'm going to send you the internal revenue of a section that says only persons that are 14th Amendment citizens are to pay taxes. All of this is in their books. Uh, this ain't nothing new. Yes, sir. All anybody that swears to uphold the Constitution of the United States is number one an enemy to you, but number two they are citizens of Washington D.C. Now figure that one out. Yeah, they are I mean, enemies of you because they swear to uphold it, and then they turn on you when they get through saying I, I I do. Every one of them because they uphold democracy. Democracy is not in the Constitution. Well, what about the fact that in um, the, the 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 Anglo's they have nationality under their state that they're born in, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. They are Fourteenth Amendment citizens. They don't have nationality under nothing. They cannot have nationality in the United States. They got to go home. Now, I'm not talking about land rights. I'm not that, I'm, see, there's different jurisdictions, and the ju- jurisdictions overlap each other. I'm no, but you said, you said nationality. Nationality is land. They can't declare Michigan their land. They can't declare the United States their land if they're Europeans. I don't understand that. that I, okay, that's over my head because I, I guess I don't know enough about, you know, the, 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 the international law when it comes to national... Okay, but you said nationality. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said, but I'm you saying... You called them. Wait a minute. Listen, listen. You called yeah. them. You didn't call them Europeans. What did you call them? Anglos. Germans. Okay. All right, good, good. Now, give me the nationality of that Anglo. They got something. What yeah, is it? We're, we're talking about two different things because we're talking about two different jurisdictions. <laughs> It's just like that Bundy situation out there on in Denver, okay? He has homestead rights. Now, we know the land don't belong to him. He never said he owned it. He knows he don't own the land, but he has water rights under the Homestead Act. Well, we know that's their law, right? And it's not your law, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm talking about what I said about them. But you have a right to go to Bundy's land and throw that punk off the land. Because you already did it. 
I was only using that as an example to clarify uh, what I'm trying to say. Trying to work with you on your examples. Huh? And I'm trying to tell you, Bundy has no right to, what you call it, homestead rights, uh, title rights, certificate rights. He has no right. No European can own any land in the United States. None of them. Uh, I, said, None. He, I didn't I, specified he doesn't own the land. He has rights to use under the homestead laws. Whether they're right. illegal, immoral, or whatever, his rights fall under their yeah. imposition of their law over yeah. top of your rights as an indigenous person to own, I mean, to, to use and control the land. They came Why in and... Why you it over yours? Why, Why is it over yours? I'm sorry? Why would you say that his rights are over yours because he has rights to do this, do that, the other? Why do you keep saying that? Because I'm referring to the history of the fact that they took it. Yeah, but you haven't went to court to take it away from him. But you know, uh, uh, Henry, Turner, Henry Turner went to court and told the Europeans to get out of all of the land from Alaska all the way to Argentina and won. That, but they ain't gone. You're right. You're, you're totally correct. Because we don't have the knowledge of Turner to unite and put them off the land. We're still Christians. We're still 14th Amendment citizens. Well, We're I'm still Negroes. Any of those things, but the problem with us is we, they have brute force, and we don't have anything to back up. We, we, they, we don't have scary weapons. We don't have EMP weapons. We don't have bio weapons. We don't have any of that stuff. That's what we're dealing with, demons, okay? Did you, know, no, did you look at Django? Django showed you how to do it. It was all about contract. Thank, thank you, Beth. Go look, look at the movie Django. We don't need no weapons. You don't know? need weapons. I just gave you a law that tells you that a school park can pay your bill. You ain't even listening to me. I am listening to you, sir. Okay. Why are we in debt? We need to study this deeper and realize the, the magnitude of getting out of debt so we can deal with places like this guy out in Colorado, wherever he's at, so we can go get not, our land. We're not in debt. We're being robbed. They're robbing right. our birthright. We're not in debt. They're robbing us. You're totally right. But they don't rob you. You better say because you don't even know what birthright are. Yes, I you do. Don't know this land I don't know. You don't know. Not even yeah. our people. Miss, listen, and I'm, I'm wrestling with you, and I don't like to wrestle. But 90% of our people still believe we come over here on a ship. You know what? I don't hold myself responsible for what 90% of our people do. I'm trying to take personal responsibility and accountability for what I'm doing. I'm the one who spent hours reading and so forth, and if they don't want to know, I can't do anything about that, sir. I, I gave that up a long time ago. Only a higher power can wake up to dry bones, not me. I care and love them, but I, it's too many, it ain't enough hours in the day to read all this stuff and learn all this stuff and talk about what 90% of the people don't want to do. As a matter of fact, you know what I say? No, free, let me tell you this. It's free will me. choice, it's, and I respect it. Excuse me. It's one I'm sorry, thing to read. It's, some, it's one thing to read something, but it's another thing to act upon it. You can read all kind of stuff, but if you don't no. act upon it, what good is it? I have yeah. acted upon it. And yeah, I well, told you I did that. I, I got to go, but I want to say this one thing. If you're acting upon what you know, why would you even stop on the show that Bush said something? Who cares? Because I was trying to get clarity and asked you a question to understand the difference between the private side but and the public put, side. But you and put I was giving you an example when I mentioned him that I was helping my daughter with a student loan that I, they were coming after for her. What's the reason why I mentioned that? I don't know everything. I'm a student. I don't know everything. Let's not keep saying that. You know enough. You know enough. I'm just Go saying. Look at the movie, Jack. Go look at the movie, Django. Send me an email, send me an email, and I'll convert with you more. I got to go, man. My producer okay, came out. Okay, uh, Ron, we got a, yeah. a couple more people that have been holding on. There's All right. Okay. All right. Uh, area code 248. 248, is that our area? Yeah. Yes. Let me see. I'm trying to. 248-979. Okay. Right 
Okay, what about 276-790? Yeah, um, to the show, uh, I, what I think the lady was trying to say, was, uh, she wasn't trying to be funny. What I think she was trying to say is uh, you can know all the law that you want, but until we, after we learn the law, we still need a, a military component because we, if we don't have a military component, what happened in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, what, ne- what happened on the larger level that you all are talking about now, and I, and I agree with her. Well, you can know all the law you want, but they don't help our law. They broke every treaty they had with the in- so-called Indians. And I, what I think she was trying to say is we got to master that, but on the other side of the of the uh, of the court, you have to have a military component because if you don't, that is going to annoy the law, and then they're going to take care of you. That's what I think she was trying to say. And when she was uh, talking about the the private to the public, I think that was very interesting because one time I heard uh, attorney automatics. He was talking about uh, people celebrating Juneteenth, and he said that was an important holiday, but we have to realize that we're still not free because Emancipation, it doesn't mean freedom. It means transfer of ownership. And I wanted to see what you and uh, your guests thought about that. And I enjoy the show. Uh, good night. All right. Well, I didn't I didn't really get a question in there, but uh, all this matters. He cannot make any statement that will free us because he has sworn to support a whole and live and die for the Queen of England. Because Otis Maddox was a esquire. So all of that language he used was gobbledygook. You know, it, it's nothing that can set us free. Yes, the Emancipation Proclamation was nothing more than a transfer from one to the other. But why didn't he say we need something better than that, such as a nationality? You know, anybody knows it, but not anybody. Most people understand today that the Emancipation Proclamation was a damn lie that they freed the slaves. No, they didn't. That was, and, a, and a proclamation is only an announcement by an elected official. It's not a law. It's not, a, it's not an ordinance. It's not a, 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 a statute. It's only somebody open up their damn mouth and start talking, such as the lady said, Bush said, blah, blah, blah. That's only a proclamation. Damn, Bush. But she threatened it so people would pick it up to say that we can or cannot do something because Bush said it. And my point is we need to get out of that slave mentality and start looking at it as it is and see for ourselves what is and what is not true. But we will never... Never, never, never have enough arms and guns to fight ourselves to freedom. Never. And I'm not even in this. My mind is so far from that is pathetic. But what we can do is use our intelligence through paperwork. And I just gave it to you. If, you, if that lady or you can get out of debt, you'd be free as a whistle. Right. Sir, I'm and not, I'm not, I'm not trying to show you how to get out of debt. Okay, sir, I'm not saying the, uh, the military component to be all in all. What I was saying is that you need both. Because I said on one side of the court you need to have a master of the law, but on the other side of the court you have to have a military component. Because uh, even though we were under the system, we had systems like the Black Wall Street, and that got you know destroyed because we didn't have a military component to, to protect what I'm we had. I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say this to you. All right. I'm saying we need both. I got you. I got you. Now, Dred Scott, are you familiar with Dred Scott, Kate? Yes, sir. All right. The reason Dred Scott lost and told to get out of town by sundown is because he went to court as a Negro. All of that you're talking about, Rosewood, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and all of those court fights we've had in your lifetime and in my lifetime, we went as Negroes. Ain't no such thing as a Negro brother. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Then why do you keep bringing up this military component? That ain't got nothing to do with, with, with nationality. If we would declare our nationality, everything would change overnight. 
When you go to court and say, Ron March, I say, I am indigenous Wachita Moore. Ron March L.P. Put that in the record. That changes everything. What does it do? It tells the judge that he has no jurisdiction over me because I was here before him. Now, they would sit down and shut up because I don't want to hear I'm going to sit down and shut up and they're going to say another word. When you're going to jail for 20 years, I'm not going to say another word. But I guarantee you within six to ten hours, they're going to turn me loose. Because I'm not a 14th Amendment citizen. And you're going to have to learn that. The lady's going to have to learn that. You're going to be tried for your knowledge. And if you think you're going to sit back and learn something on somebody's radio station and, and spout it to the judge or to the police, quit listening to these programs. You're going to be fired for what you know as an individual. I risk my case. I, and I'm not angry because I'm just trying to lay it out there. You know, I understand. I get the same way. You know, you know, I'm here to learn just like everybody else. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I got to go, man. I appreciate you. I like for you to email me. I'll talk to you more if you email me.